So we're going to work out some fluid statics problems now, particularly dealing with flow or fluid resting on a gate and us figuring out how much force we need uh, in order to keep this gate closed. So what we're really interested in this particular problem, let me try to highlight it, is what is the force that is needed here? I'll call this force B. in order to keep this gate closed. So if you're an engineer and you're designing a, a gate system and you need to know how strong to make that little stop, you need to do some of these calculations. Now the gate here from our perspective in this two-dimensional perspective is uh, looks just like a flat plane but obviously it goes into the page. It has some depth. So I've drawn kind of a three-dimensional drawing or another perspective of the gate, if we look at it from the side, so if you were standing uh, here in the water and you were looking right at the gate, this is what you would see. You would see a gate that was six meters tall and five meters depth into the page, okay? So in this problem, let's say that uh, so let me get rid of our drawing of ourselves here. Let's say that uh, the water comes down to about one meter from the gate hinge. Okay. And the depth of this water here, so the depth of this water is um, five meters. So of the six meter height of the gate, only five meters is submerged. And what we're trying to do is find out what the force at B is. So what I want to start doing is looking at our analysis, okay? What are the equations that are available to us uh, from the beginning of these problems? So in any of these problems, we're interested in a few things. The first thing is, what is the magnitude of the force acting on this gate? So if we were going to find FR, what is the magnitude of this force, FR? So FR, what is the size of that, get that force? Okay, and the next question is, where is it acting so that we can sum the moments about a point and we could find out what, those value, what the value for force B is? Okay, so we need to know what it is and where it's acting at. So in order to determine where it is, we use this first equation here, f of r. This is just taken straight out of your textbook. Where we have f of r is equal to p naught plus rho g y sub c sine theta times area. Okay, for most of these problems, remember in our class, we're going to just to go ahead and assume that atmospheric pressure acts on both sides of the gate. So, what that means is the atmospheric pressure term cancels. It's not relevant for our case here since we have atmospheric pressures acting on opposing sides of the gate. They just cancel each other out. That force cancels out. So we have the density of the fluid, which in case is just going to be 1,000 times gravity, the gravitational constant, times y sub c. And remember, y sub c is the distance from the surface of the water to the centroid. But there's a couple centroids that we need to take into account here. So let me go ahead and start writing this. So f of r is equal to rho g y sub c sine theta times alpha, I mean area. Okay, so density we've already established is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times the gravitational constant 9.81 times y sub c. Now y sub c is the distance from the surface of the water to the centroid of the object, but remember there's two centroids right now that we're considering. 
One is the centroid of the entire object, which would obviously be right in the middle. So the centroid of the entire object would be right in the middle. Okay, how do we know that? So let's go, you can go to your textbook and you can look up the, for different shapes. Here we have a, re, a rectangular shaped um, gate here and it's showing us that the centroid is exactly B over 2, A over 2. It's right in the middle, okay? So we have that centroid option. But remember, okay, in this particular problem and with others, we're interested in what is submerged, okay? What is the submerged centroid? And what is submerged, if we were looking at that, we would only be considering this part of the gate here. So let me circle that. This part of the gate here, that's what we're interested in, is that submerged section. Okay? So what is the centroid of the submerged section? It's going to be 5 divided by 2, even though the gate is uh, 6 meters tall. We're interested with the submerged section. Times sine of theta, and in this case, theta is the angle that the gate takes relative to the floor, okay? Uh, and that is going to be uh, here 90, okay? And so this goes to, this is just 1, sine of 90 is 1, times the area of the gate. Again, we have a few areas to consider, but remember, we're interested in what is submerged. So we're going to say this is 5 times a depth of 5 meters. So that's the area of the gate. If you're not sure what the area of a particular shape is, you can go to your table, okay, and you can look up what the area. So here area is A times B. A is this length, B is this length. And you know, you guys know it for this one, but for a triangle or for an ellipse or some other shape, you may not know it. And those are fair game on a test, by the way. So keep that in mind when you guys are uh, are solving those. So we can calculate the resultant force for this uh, to be 613,125 newtons. Okay. So that's going to be our magnitude of the force acting on this gate. All right. Now we need to know where it's acting. Okay. And in order to know where it's acting, we're going to use our equation given right below the one on the top there. So we have we need to know y sub p, which is the distance from the surface of the water to the location where the force is acting. y sub c we've already determined is 5 over 2. So let me write that here. So this is 5 over 2. And remember, since atmospheric pressure is acting on both sides of our gate, p naught is 0. So if that's 0, this whole term goes away, right? So we have 5 over 2 plus Ixx over y sub c. So we have y sub p equals 2 y sub c plus Ixx, which is the moment of inertia, divided by y sub c. And I'm sorry, this should also be times area. Okay? So y sub c times area. Okay? So the y sub c we've already determined is 5 over 2. Now, what's our moment of inertia for this shape? Again, we'll refer you back to this table a b cubed over 12. So A being this axis, the depth into the paper, so let's look at this. The depth of the gate inside of this paper is 5 meters, so A would be uh, 5. B would be what? B is the height of this submerged section, which is 5 cubed divided by 12. And that's all divided by 
5 over 2, which we already know what y sub c is, times the submerged area, which is 5 times 5. And what we'll calculate for y, y sub p is, uh, let's see, 2.5 plus 0 0.8333. And uh, this comes out to be 3.33 meters. So it acts 3.33 meters below the surface of the water, which is uh, the centroid is at 2.5. So remember, this equation is basically saying this one here is that we have it's at the location of the centroid plus a little bit further down okay that's going to be our location where this force acts and that's always the case um, so let's go ahead and uh, solve for this force so if we sum the moments about a and that's equal to zero so let me go ahead and draw a free body diagram here because uh, I don't want to confuse you guys too much. We've, we've drawn a lot of stuff on that other diagram is what I'm trying to say. All right. So if we consider this is the whole six meter gate, okay? We've determined that the force acts, this is the hinge here, it acts 4.33 meters, right? So the 3.33 plus, remember, it had a meter above it that was not submerged. So 4.33 meters down from the very top of the gate. We have F of R. So these two should be the same here. Okay. The question is, what is F of B? And remember, we have a moment, we'll call this pin A here, moment about A. So in order for this to be static, we'll sum the moments about this pin here. So uh, in one direction we have F of R times <coughs> 4.33 And the other direction, we have f of b times 6. And all of this is equal to 0. Oh my gosh, I left this on here. So here, we have 4.33 minus the opposing moment. If we solve for, plug in our values, so we know f of r, um, we know uh, everything else we can solve for the force needed at B to be uh, 442,471 newtons or 442 kilonewtons. Okay. So that is the solving procedure you would take. Uh, for this type of problem, I would like to go ahead and stop here. And I'll set up another fluid statics problem for you guys so that we can figure out what is the force we need um, and where that force is located.